Hello, my name is Sherry Albro. I'm a nurse practitioner with the pediatric diabetes team at the Joslin Diabetes Center affiliate at SUNY Upstate Medical University. I'm going to talk to you today about insulin. Insulin is safe. Many families report concerns about giving their child medication, but insulin is very safe. You are just replacing something that the body is no longer making appropriately. By giving your body the insulin it needs, you will feel better. Insulin injections are almost pain-free. There are two main types of insulin. Background insulin is also called basal insulin. Some examples of this are Lantus, Levomir, Tegeo, Traceba, and NPH. These are often taken one or two times per day. These insulins maintain your blood glucose level during the night and between meals. These are taken at around the same time each day and do not depend on a blood glucose level or food schedule. An example may be you take your basal insulin at 8 p.m. every night, and you would take that at about 8 p.m. every night no matter what. It doesn't matter what your blood sugar is, if you've eaten dinner recently, if you haven't eaten dinner, if 8 o'clock is your time, you would take your basal insulin at 8 o'clock at night. The other insulin, mealtime insulin, is also called bolus insulin. Some examples of this insulin are Humalog, Novolog, Apidra, and regular insulin. These help lower blood glucose levels when it is elevated. These also help control blood sugar caused by a meal or a snack. Ideally, you would take this insulin before you eat. These insulins are taken based on a blood sugar value and food that will be eaten. The dose will likely be different each meal and each day. I'd like to talk to you about drawing insulin from a vial. First, you would prepare the vial. Roll the vial of insulin to be sure it is well mixed. Shaking the bottle would create air bubbles so rolling is a much better option for mixing. Next, wipe the top of the vial with an alcohol swab. We now need to prepare the syringe. First, take the cap off the syringe and pull the plunger out to your insulin dose. Next, remove the needle cap, being careful not to poke yourself. With the vial of insulin on a table or flat surface, push the needle into the vial. Then push down on the plunger to push the air from the syringe into the airspace of the vial. You will then pick up the vial with the syringe still inserted and turn that upside down as illustrated in the picture. Pull the plunger halfway down to draw insulin into the syringe. Push all this insulin back into the vial. Now slowly pull the plunger to draw out the desired insulin dose. Check for air bubbles. If air bubbles are present, push the dose back into the vial and repeat the steps above. Once the dose is obtained without air bubbles, remove the needle from the vial. You will need to choose an appropriate injection site for the insulin injection. For the stomach, inject at least 
two inches away from the belly button, any scars or moles. The arms inject into fatty tissue on the back of the arms. For the thighs, inject in the middle or outer part of the thigh. Stay at least four inches above the knee. I often explain to families, imagine an, an invisible line going from the very top of the leg down to the knee. Anything on that line or over to the outside is a great place to inject. For the buttocks, there are a couple options. There is a skin fold area above the waistband that can be used or also what many people would call the wallet area, so the upper outer area of the buttocks. To actually inject the insulin with a syringe, you would hold the syringe like a pencil in one hand. Pinch up the skin with the other hand. Push plunger to inject the dose. Let go of the pinched skin. Remove the needle and discard. Another option is a reusable pen device. These devices are typically provided to you by your diabetes care team, and you pick up the insulin cartridges. In the photos below, there's Humalog and Novalog. You pick those right up from the pharmacy. To prepare this device for use, make sure you have clean hands, please. Remove the pen cap and set that aside. Twist the cartridge frame component and remove that. Place the cartridge from the pharmacy in the cartridge frame. Twist the pen back together and then replace that protective cap for storage. You have now built a pen. Before we discuss more insulin administration, many families ask, what can they do to dispose of their sharps? Sharps are anything with the ability to puncture someone's skin. Some examples are insulin syringes, pen needles, and lancets. Never recap, bend, or break the needle. Choose a strong plastic or metal container with a tight cap. Place all sharps into this container after use. Once the container is full, tightly close the lid and seal with tape. Throw this container away or bring it to Joslyn or find a needle disposal program near you at www.safeneedledisposal.org. Some examples of approved containers are dishwasher detergent, bleach containers, laundry detergent containers. Some unapproved containers are very thin plastic, such as coffee cans, also containers without lids that can be sealed tightly, so cans of soda would not be an appropriate container. Storing your insulin. Do not store insulin in the freezer or the door of the refrigerator. The most stable temperature is in the refrigerator main compartment. Unused and unopened insulin should be stored in the refrigerator until the expiration date the manufacturer prints on the container of insulin. Keep open vials or pens at room temperature away from heat and sunlight. Depending on brand, open vials and pens are effective for 28 to 42 days. Your diabetes care team will provide specific instructions for the insulin you are prescribed. Using an insulin pen. 
This may either be the reusable pen device that you prepared in a previous step, or a disposable pen that you've picked up from the pharmacy. Wash your hands. Make sure you have the correct pen because many of the pens look identical, so it's important to look at the label and be sure you have the correct insulin. Remove that protective storage cap from the pen device and set that aside. Wipe the tip of the pen with an alcohol swab. Next, we'll attach the pen needle. Select a new pen needle each time and remove the protective paper covering. Screw the pen needle onto the insulin pen. Pull to remove the clear plastic cap and set that aside. We will be using this larger clear plastic cap again later. Remove the smaller colored plastic cap from the pen needle and discard. Perform a safety check. This means dial the pen to two units. Point the pen towards the ceiling and push the button on the pen device while watching the tip of the pen needle carefully. Be sure you see a drop of insulin to ensure all components of the pen device are working. If you do not see a drop of insulin, repeat the above steps until you do. Do not use a pen unless the safety check has been successfully completed. To administer insulin using an insulin pen, dial in the prescribed dose. Insert the pen needle into unpinched skin. Press the button on the pen device until the entire dose has been delivered. Count to 10 to be sure the entire dose has left the pen device and needle. Replace the clear plastic cap that we saved in a previous slide. This will allow you to twist off the pen needle without puncturing yourself accidentally. You can then discard this pen needle in an approved sharps container. Well, I hope I have answered all of your questions about administering insulin. Please feel free to call your Joslyn care team if you have questions. Have a good day.